We begin tonight with new CBS News polling out of the Midwest from battlegrounds Wisconsin and Michigan with the midterm elections now just 29 days away. We have these races covered with three of my CBS News colleagues. Look at this, an all-star team. Anthony Salvanto, director of CBS News Elections and Surveys. Caitlin Huey Burns, CBS News political correspondent on the ground in Wisconsin tonight. And joining me here, Sarah Ewall Weiss, CBS News reporter with me here in Washington. Let's begin with you, Anthony. You have the numbers. Set the stage for us. Walk us through what key issues seem to matter in Wisconsin that could resonate in other races. How you doing, Scott? Okay, let's take a look, starting with the Senate as it currently stands, the seats that are up, and then why are we focusing so much on Wisconsin? Well, it's one of a handful of seats that are going to decide control. And as we've noted in our new poll, this one is tight, right? Ron Johnson, the incumbent at 50, Mandela Barnes at 49. In polling terms, that's effectively a tie. Let me answer your question about why that is. Let me start with this. When you look at the things people say are the reasons they're backing Ron Johnson, it's his economic policies. That's a theme we've seen throughout these midterms so far. It's Republicans being helped by people feeling bad about the economy. You get to Mandela Barnes. He is helped by his stance on abortion. That's another running theme. That's motivating Democrats. But far down on that list, though, are his economic policies, or farther down, I should say, and his views on police and crime. Now, that's important because, you know, we've noticed Republicans are trying to make this an issue. They're running ads against Democrats, against Barnes. And when we look at that, we look at, we ask people, okay, whose policies might make you feel safe? Well, look at this gap, Scott. I'm going to show you this. This gap between 42% who think Johnson's policies would make them feel safe and the 29% for Barnes may be one reason that Republicans are kind of going in on that, Scott. You look at the numbers in the crosstabs you've reviewed here. What jumps out at you as unorthodox or something you don't see in the traditional incumbent against Democratic challenger? Yeah, the interesting thing here is you've got to look at when you've got to um, go at election denialism. And this is something that jumps out at me because, frankly, it's new for this cycle, right? To what extent will this play a part? Well, I'll focus in on this almost half of people, half of registered voters, who believe their perception that Ron Johnson wanted the 2020 election overturned. Well, if you look at the independents in this group who believe it, they're far less likely to be voting for him. Now, Republicans, that's okay. But for independents, whom he's got to get a decent amount of, that could be an issue. And that, as opposed to the crime issue, which Republicans are trying to make an issue against Democrats, this is something Democrats are going to try to focus on as they look at democracy, as they press for these folks who are election deniers, not just in Wisconsin, but in other states as well, Scott. 87 percent combined um, say he either they're unsure or that he wanted the results overturned. That is a standout data point. Anthony Salvanto, nice work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Scott. All right, let's bring in Caitlin Huey Burns, Sarah Ewall Weiss. Caitlin's in Wisconsin. We hit that time in the calendar, Caitlin, where you wonder if people are now tuning into the race, if they're now engaged. Based on what you're seeing, based on what you're hearing, are Wisconsinites engaged and mindful now of this race? Yeah, Scott, well, you know, less than 30 days to go before the election, and it is starting to feel like campaign time. Uh, and, and you have both candidates really hitting the trail. Uh, the Senate, as you know, is out of session until after the election. So that really gives uh, Senator Johnson, for example, the time to uh, campaign. We'll be with him tomorrow. We were with Mandela Barnes at a couple of events today. Interestingly enough, and this is reflected in our polling, his first event today was on the issue of abortion and abortion access. Here in Wisconsin, there is a law on the books that goes back to the mid-1800s that bans abortion in almost all cases except for the life of the mother. That's being challenged by the attorney general here. But that is something that Democrats and especially the Barnes campaign hope to make uh, something to help drive voter turnout among Democrats, but also potentially reach out to independent mind minded voters. But when you look at the, our polling, it shows that that is the top issue for Democratic voters, and that's fueling a support for Barnes. But it is not the top concern uh, among overall voters. That's the economy and inflation and even crime. And uh, Anthony mentioned those numbers on crime. Those numbers are helping Johnson. And here in Wisconsin, he has been hammering Barnes on the issue of crime. And it's something that the campaign has had to contend with. 
If this unambiguous, unequivocal pattern we're seeing in these Senate races where Democrats are trying to make abortion rights the primary issue, Republicans trying to make crime. Let me shift to Sarah for a moment, looking at the Ohio Senate race, happening simultaneously, of course. How effective is the Democratic challenger, Democratic candidate Tim Ryan, doing in making abortion rights the issue? So, you know, he is talking about abortion on the campaign trail because that is important to Democrats. But in Ohio, he has been focusing almost all of his time specifically on air advertising and in digital advertising and largely on the campaign trail as well, specifically on the economy, not focusing so much on the abortion issue, even though that is very relevant in Ohio uh, because we've seen the headlines about the 10-year-old having to leave the state for the abortion. Uh, so it's still coming up in conversations there. There is a six-week abortion ban. Uh, that has been controversial specifically in Ohio. But he's talking about manufacturing. He's talking about inflation. He's talking about lowering taxes uh, for workers there. And, you know, this is one of those races where you look at Ohio and President Trump won Ohio in 2016. He won Ohio in 2020 by seven or eight points in both of those races. So you'd think, well, we're going to write Ohio off. That's now a red state. And some strategists, if you talk to them in the state, they still say, no, this is a Republican state to lose. It is definitely heading in that direction with the Republican candidate, J.D. Vance. But if you look at the Real Clear Politics average, it's extremely tight. It's a little over one point between Vance and Ryan. Of course, the advertising on the Republican side has also been very focused on the economy there. And, you know, they're really just hitting each other over the exact same issues, manufacturing and taxes. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where that state actually goes. Of course, uh, Democratic Senator Sherrod Brown Brown won the state in 2018, but we're in a very different climate right. politically and economically since that race was won by a Democrat. So this could be a last stand for Democrats there. It's rich history in Ohio and statewide races of the economy being the focal point, no matter what else is happening in that Absolutely. cycle. It's also this history of polls giving Democrats some false optimism. I want to talk about money and campaign ads in Wisconsin, Caitlin. Obviously, both candidates are on the air. People of Wisconsin have probably had about enough of the campaign ads. But what are you seeing? How is Ron Johnson messaging as an incumbent that things aren't going well, so he should be reelected? Yeah, it's a really fascinating dynamic, Scott, because on one hand, as I mentioned, the economy, inflation are of top concern. Uh, so you would imagine that voters would want something to change. But uh, Johnson is banking on the fact or the idea, or he's hoping at least, that what voters want to change is the party in power, and he is not part of the party in power on the Senate side. Uh, so, so that's kind of an interesting dynamic here, and you have Mandela Barnes, who is campaigning. He's the lieutenant governor of Wisconsin, uh, kind of campaigning for that fresh new voice in the Senate, but he is part of the Democratic Party, which is facing headwinds, given that they control everything in Washington, even by a slim margin. Uh, so what you're seeing here in Wisconsin is really what you're you're seeing across the country where you have the Republican focused on the economy and crime and the Democrat focused on abortion and trying to kind of play into how that all plays locally. Um, you also have a very interesting governor's race here where you have Tony Evers, the incumbent Democratic governor. Uh, I actually had a chance to talk to him earlier today at an event and I said, you know, why is Wisconsin so close? And he said, look, this is a purple state. Remember those very slim margins that we saw in 2020 and 2016. And I asked him, you know, the economy is top of mind for voters. It's the top concern. You know, it, are you concerned about the economy? And he said that he feels good about how the economy is in Wisconsin, but acknowledging, us, of course, that people may not be feeling it uh, when it comes to their own pocketbook. So you're talking about inflation. You're talking about the sky high uh, price of pretty much everything nowadays. But all of that is kind of factoring in onto the ground here in the final stretch. And when you look at the airwaves and when you look at the momentum and when you look at what we're seeing in our polling, it seems like Johnson, at least in that Senate race, his attack ads on crime and on the economy seem to be working because they're fueling his base of support. And when you look at how abortion is factoring in, it's giving voters a reason to support Barnes, but not enough to overcome, at least in the polling so far with a month to go. Two very well-funded candidates back in Ohio, Sarah. Tim Ryan, the Democrats, raised a lot of money. How's the Republican J.D. Vance doing? There was concern earlier. Yes, you know what? Uh, over the summer, it was showing that he really was not raising the kind of money a Senate candidate needs, whereas Tim Ryan was raising double what he had 
this quarter from July through September. We know that Tim Ryan raised $17 million, which is a huge sum of money for a Democrat, especially in Ohio. We don't yet know what J.D. Vance has raised there. The filing deadline is at the end of this week, so we'll be looking more at those numbers. But I will say, despite the uh, funding disadvantage that Vance has had, there has been a significant change recently. Candidates who have a lot of money can spend a ton of money in advertising. So Vance was behind in advertising by a lot. But the Senate Leadership Fund, the uh, Mitch McConnell-aligned PAC, swooped in in September, spent over $10 million in the state. They're going to spend about $28 million through Election Day in total from September through November 8th. Uh, and that has really closed the gap where some of these Republican candidates have struggled to raise funds. Uh, the Senate Leadership Fund has really swooped in, and other outside groups have really been helping Republicans as we move closer to Election Day. No matter where the money comes from, it buys ads. It does. Sarah Ewald Weiss, Caitlin Huey Burns. Thank you both.